The Marvels is an awful movie, and considering that the first one was also terrible, it should not have come as a surprise to anyone. The story is incredibly stupid, the special effects look half finished, the characters have no chemistry between each other, and the main villain looks like she has a mental illness and was allowed to dress herself unsupervised. The movie is just a convoluted mess, and considering just how bad the pacing and jump cuts are, you can tell that this was butchered in the editing room, which is probably why it's the shortest MCU runtime to date. People know things they shouldn't know, talk about shit without any context, characters fly across the galaxy in a matter of moments, and the flow of the movie feels like a lot of scenes stacked up against each other, without a through line weaving them into a cohesive story. None of the characters are remotely likeable, they have no character arcs and are the same person at the end of the movie as where they began. The film is also incredibly boring because they are never in any real danger throughout the movie, and the fight scenes they have range from bad to shit. There's also plenty of cringe dialogue, with Miss Marvel acting like a creepy stalker that wants to fuck Carol Danvers. They even have Monica and Carol act like jilted lovers when they meet up, so with how everyone was behaving, you'd think that there was going to be a three-way, but unfortunately there wasn't, as that would have been the only good scene in the entire film. The plot is dumb as fuck and the rules they establish such as characters swapping places whenever they use their powers are inconsistent, because there are plenty of times they do use their powers and they never trade places. It's probably because the writers realise that they can't do any fight scenes without them, so they selectively choose when they work. They also never do anything interesting with the three of them trading places, like setting up a simple trolley problem, where the three main characters need to save three different people in three different locations, and because using the powers at the same time would prevent them from saving anyone, one of them would have to make the decision to let someone die in order to allow the other two to be rescued. This would introduce drama and conflict for the characters to work off, and actually build a relationship with each other, rather than the shit we have been been given, because everyone trading places was a gimmick to force the characters to stick together, nothing more. The main trio are completely wasted characters lacking an arc or any sense of personality. First off is Captain Marvel, and Brie Larson looks like she would rather be anywhere else but here. I mean, she is completely uninterested in this film and her acting shows this, probably because she knows that this is her last time as Captain Marvel and it's in this piece of shit movie. Her character's relationship with Miss Marvel has no depth whatsoever. They should have had a simple never meet your hero type of story, as the reality of Carol's job, making difficult choices saving some people and not others, would shatter Kamala's illusions of her hero. This would have brought conflict into the relationship as she slowly gets to know the real Carol Danvers and not the symbol she has been building inside of her head, but they never follow through with that. There is only one moment in the movie where she has to disappoint Kamala by leaving people behind, but the film never does anything with this, and I feel that this is the result of having three main protagonists, which leads me into Monica Rambeau. Now, she is not horrific or annoying, in fact she really isn't anything because she barely leaves an impression. She should have been cut out of the story and given all of that time to Kamala and Carol, as she is just a blank slate with nothing to offer and nowhere to go. The only story she has is that she holds a grudge against Carol Danvers for leaving and not coming back, but they get over this almost immediately and she has nothing else to do for the rest of the film. She develops no relationship with Kamala at all, they might as well be strangers to each other. Next up is Kamala Khan, who was never a fighter in her own show, but now she can do kung fu and can even beat people up with a scarf. She has had a TV show and a movie, and we still don't know the answer as to why she has such an unhealthy obsession with Captain Marvel. Kamala also serves as comic relief for most of the movie, and she is fucking horrendous, as all she does is just scream, act awkward, and says cringe dialogue about how much she absolutely gushes over Captain Marvel, and I can't see why anyone would do that. Then there's Nick Fury, who continues to be a joke and barely does anything in this movie. Samuel Jackson at this point must not give a shit beyond collecting a paycheck as he just keeps showing up in movies and TV shows that just absolutely rape Nick Fury's character. And finally we have the villain Dar Ben or Ben Dar or whatever the fuck she is called, as it doesn't matter because she is just female Ronan. 
the Me Too accuser, and besides looking like a hobo with her stupid grill, her grand plan is retarded and it doesn't make any sense. She is barely a character, and even though the writers try to make her come across as intimidating, what she really comes across as is cringe. The science behind this movie is fucked as well. I understand this being the MCU, the science was never going to be realistic, but the film takes the piss as we see planets who have been without an active sun for years just get a little dark. They don't freeze over or just hail off into space as there is no longer gravity. No, the only effect from the sun disappearing is that the days just aren't as bright. That's fucking stupid. But what's even more shocking than that is how terrible everything looks when the budget is $270 million. How? How did I spend that much money? Now you've got to wonder what they spent that money on because it clearly wasn't on the film. Now with all that said, let's run through the dog shit plot. It begins with female Ronan finding the other half of Kamala's bracelet before meeting up with the Skrulls for a council. She explains that when Carol killed the high intelligence that governed their planet, the Kree fell into a civil war that fucked up the entire atmosphere. Also, the sun has stopped working. Why? Don't know. Usually stars last for billions of years, but I guess a civil war on Kree somehow affected the sun. We then cut to Kamala who despite being an adult and it being the middle of the day, she is in her bedroom dressed in her superhero costume and fantasizing about Captain Marvel like a creepy sex obsessed stalker. Her bangle then starts to activate because female Ronan used her bangle to leave a hole in the universe. Captain Marvel and Monica Rambo then touch both the holes and it makes all of them entangled to each other by switching places whenever they use their powers at the same time. I have a few questions. Shouldn't Carol and Monica have connected with female Ronan's bracelet instead of Kamala's as she was the one who made the holes they touched? Why does female Ronan have the real Ronan's hammer when it was already destroyed? And why is it just as powerful without an Infinity Stone as it was with one? Why does Monica not teleport with her spacesuit and Kamala just suffocates out in space? And why is female Ronan's bangle way more stronger than Miss Marvel's if they are a matching pair? None of this makes any sense. So after three terrible fight scenes, Monica and Kamala end up on female Ronan's ship, and even though her bangle is easily visible on her wrist, somehow female Ronan just can't figure out that Kamala has what she is looking for. What are you fucking stupid? Now despite Carol being on Earth and then being on another planet god knows how far in the universe, Carol somehow manages to fly to them in less than a minute and without any navigation. What? Female Ronan then jumps off the ship and everybody follows before she opens a portal and then sucks up the planet's atmosphere. So as we see the portal sucking in ships and collapsing stone, people can somehow just walk around without being vacuumed up into space. How? Fuck if I know. So they manage to escape and rescue some scrolls, and Carol decides to contact her best friend Valkyrie because they are both equally unlikable. So despite never having spoken outside of this scene, she wants her to take the scrolls back to Earth as refugees. I guess none of the writers have watched Secret Invasion because there is a massive scroll human war going on at Earth right now, so it's not exactly the safest place for them to go. Also, why are they asking Valkyrie for help, as New Asgard is a settlement offered by the Norwegian government? They have no say in immigration, it's Norway that does. So what she is really doing is trafficking aliens onto the planet without telling anyone. Carol, Kamala and Monica discuss what exactly female Ronan is going to do next, and they come to the conclusion that she is harvesting certain pieces off of planets through her portal so she can graft them onto her homeworld. That doesn't make any sense! Now that would never work and is a completely retarded idea, but this is the plot we have been given. So because the Kree homeworld has suffered a drought despite having no sun, they believe they are heading towards a certain water world where Captain Marvel happens to be the princess of it. Buckle up because this is the worst part of the movie. So when they land on this shithole, we learn that the native population can only communicate by singing. It does not explain why they also dance as well, but as Carol says this is a matriarchal society, so it's no wonder why this whole planet is completely gay and useless. Unfortunately, we are then subjected to some fucking awful songs and we even get to see the shit Marvel suits they put on, and fuck me, aren't those costumes just hideous? 
Thankfully, female Ronan shows up to stop everybody singing and a fight breaks out. During it, only now does she realise that Kamala has the other bangle because the blind bitch for some reason couldn't see it before. Female Ronan ends up getting away as she opens the portal and begins to suck all of the water from the planet. Billions of people and ocean life have just died and it's never mentioned or acknowledged. Instead, all the group do is have yet another talk about their fucking feelings before deciding to go after her again. We cut to the space station that Nick Fury and Kamala Khan's family are on and they are hit by an energy wave that disables most of the escape pods. But luckily for them, that shit cat from the original Captain Marvel is here and has had a lot of kids. Wow, it sure is convenient that the space cats can shrink people safely, store them in their stomachs which seems to have no acids, and then spit them out at their original size unharmed. Well, that's just silly. Silly, yes. Idiotic, yes. So naturally, they decide to feed the stat to the cats, and they put them all on one escape pod as it lands safely on Earth. Why does Disney think that the insides of animals are just safe places to be? They pulled the same shit in Ahsoka with the stupid space whales, and now this. Female Ronan then heads to our sun and begins to drain it. So as the sun disappears, the earth goes dark, and just like Hala, there is no change in the climate, no freezing temperatures or violent storms. Nope, the day has just gotten darker, that's it. So after the sun has stopped working, the group show up to fight the female Ronan and win pretty easily in a lacklustre fight. God, that was boring. Afterwards, Monica somehow comes to the conclusion that Carol can restart the sun with her powers. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, it's clearly obvious that none of the writers have ever graduated from school, as they simply think that you can just restart the sun like a campfire. Also, did anybody else notice that this is just a massive ripoff from the ending of All-Star Superman? Because he too has to restart the sun with his powers. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Now, despite her being a genocidal maniac, Carol says that she is going to trust her for reasons that escape me. And if she promises not to do anything, she will let her go free. Can't you see how retarded she is? So of course she lies, because why the fuck wouldn't she? And immediately she betrays Carol by taking the bangle from Kamala and going full Super Saiyan. Well, good going, stupid! Carol is somehow shocked by this, and I was just wondering, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? She is a psychotic, genocidal murderer. Why exactly would she have a change of heart now? This extremely contrived moment ends up being short-lived, however, as she just fucking randomly dies out of nowhere. Oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> the whole point of getting both bangles in the first place was so that she could restart her own son safely and not die. But that turned out to be bullshit as the bangles just turned her into ash and opened up the multiverse. So with the hole open, Monica somehow comes to the conclusion that to close it, she must turn into Monica the White by having the other two charge her like a battery. Why? And how exactly did Monica know she could do this? Fuck if I know, she can just do anything the plot says she needs to. So the rift ends up getting closed and she is trapped on the other side. I don't give a fuck. The film ends with Miss Marvel and her family getting a new home before she goes on to try and recruit Kate Bishop for a dog shit Young Avengers team up. No, God, please, no, no! No! There's also a pointless after credit scene of Monica Rambo showing up in the X-Men universe. She meets her mother who is called Binary, but by the looks of it, she is probably non-binary. Oh, and we have a shit cameo from a CGI beast. Who the fuck cares? So that was the Marvels. Who made this monstrosity? The film fails at every level of storytelling as none of the characters experience any growth. Fuck all was accomplished. And worst of all, it was fucking boring to watch. The MCU is fermenting into shit in front of our very eyes and there is no hope for the future of it if they keep making abominations like this. Watching the Marvels was a chore to get through, especially the song and dance scene which I felt like it was never going to end. Surely this scene is so fucking painful to watch that it's going to be used by the CIA to torture prisoners. Anyway, that was my review on the Marvels. It's a piece of shit. <laughs>